Jesus Christ, God's holy lamb. He came from heaven and he paid the price for our sin. How much did it cost him? Well, let me ask you a question. How much would it be worth? How much would it be worth to you to have every bad thing that you've ever done, every selfish, wicked word that you've ever spoken, every evil thought that only you and God knew about, to have that totally wiped clean? All that sin and all that guilt that goes with it out of existence, never to be remembered again. How much would you pay? What is it worth to you? That is the question I want you to answer. But I'll give you a hint. Because of the Lamb of God, you do not have to pay anything. Out of all the animals God saw fit to put here on this earth, two of them stick out in my mind, being unique and having many characteristics of God, the lion and the lamb. Both of these creatures are used to describe some aspect and some characteristic of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The lion is rather self-explanatory, isn't it? The king of his domain, powerful, majestic, fearsome. But then there is the cute little lamb. What is it about the helpless, innocent animal that gives us insight into the heart and mind of God? The answer is found in the price of your sin and the sins of the whole world. But this truth was something that the people of Israel did not understand the day Jesus triumphantly rode into Jerusalem on a young donkey. Being blind to God's plan, they rejoiced at the thought of the Lion of Judah, freeing them from the outward oppression of Roman rule. After all, Jesus was heir to the throne of David. Surely, God had sent him to rule and reign during their desperate time of need. Hosanna, they shouted. Save us now. And indeed, Jesus, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, had come to save lost souls and to rule in the hearts of mankind. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.
the feelings of euphoria were short-lived. The people's expectation of their newly chosen king went unfulfilled. Jesus did not take the leadership necessary to gather together a rebel army to cleanse the city of Roman forces and take back Jerusalem. That was not his purpose. He did, however, choose to openly criticize and condemn the religious leaders and teachers for their blatant hypocrisy and their hard hearts. Ye serpents, he shouted, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? And then, as from a loving heart languishing the pain of rejection, he cries out to his chosen people, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. And barely three days later, before Pilate, their governor, his beloved people demanded that Jesus be crucified. And so God's holy lamb had come to be sacrificed for a world that hated him. The apostle John tells us he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Don't be shocked. We're a very foolish and fickle people, aren't we? Was it not prophesied long ago that we would reject our Savior? The prophet Isaiah wrote, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Have you turned your face from Jesus? Have you turned from the one who can save your soul? My friend, turn around. Turn to face him now. The Lord is long-suffering to usward, but not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Perhaps you've been rejecting Jesus for a very long time, but please know that he has not rejected you. Turn from your sin and receive Jesus.
If there's any greater trait that describes Almighty God, it would be to say that God is holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, is what the seraphim cry as they encircle the throne of God. The whole earth is full of his glory. Do you know what it means to be holy? We immediately think of sinlessness, his utter perfection. And this is true. However, these traits, combined with so many other unique characteristics, speak to the holiness of God. In other way, words, he is in every way unequaled. The scriptures tell us there is no one holy like the Lord. Indeed, there is no one besides thee, nor is there any rock like our God. Because God is above all things, he not only sets the standard, he is the standard. Our God is holy. This is why Jesus, God the Son, came to earth. He was the only one who had the ability to satisfy God the Father's holy standard. You see, we have all sinned against him, and so he alone was worthy to take the sins of the world upon himself who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and now without shedding of blood there is no remission. The price of our sin had to be paid, someone's blood had to be shed, and whoever it was had to be unequaled, holy. So, Jesus, the Holy Lamb of God, hung on the cross, and he shed his blood to pay the price for the sins of the world. No one knew this more than the thief who hung on the cross beside the Savior. In great physical stress, when all hope was gone, he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Have you ever thought that maybe God was just too busy to deal with you? Or perhaps you've thought you had just been too bad of a person for him to even listen or to even care. Dear friend, you've been very wrong. If Jesus remembered the thief on the cross, he will remember you. My life was broken and scarred by my sin, void of meaning with no hope within. Separated from God upon high judgment came, I was sentenced to die.
I now surrender my God unto thee. Please forgive me is my humble plea. In rejection my life has been spent. Now, dear Lord, I do truly repent.
The fear of death is something that most people have in common, isn't it? What actually does, the, what does lie beyond that mysterious dark curtain? We know from the scriptures that there are only two destinations awaiting us, heaven and hell. I don't like sounding too blunt, but what we all deserve is hell. Romans 6.23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death. And this death means eternal separation from God forever being punished in the fires of hell. This is what our sin has earned for us. And if you're like me, this is one paycheck you do not want to collect. But the good news, the good news is you don't have to. Jesus Christ, God's holy lamb, has already paid the price. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Hallelujah! Jesus lives. This truth is so vital to our faith. His death paid the price for our sin. And his re resurrection is evidence of that. His victory over death is proof that he is God. It is proof that his words are true. And that he conquered death. And that he alone is the giver of life. Do you see, my friend, you no longer have to face the fear of death. He faced it for you. And because he was raised to life, you can live also. You can now look forward to life eternal in the glories of heaven because Christ arose.
you can now look forward to eternal life in the glories of heaven because Christ arose. What a wonderful promise. But before you leave today, I'd like to make sure that this precious promise applies to you. The Apostle John tells us that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. That word, propitiation, it means that Jesus satisfied God's righteous demands. His resurrection is proof that he paid the price for our sin. Jesus successfully took our place on the cross when he died. The punishment he suffered for us was enough. Do you understand? We no longer have to face the fear of death. Yes, our physical bodies will die someday. But our eternal souls can live on in the glories of heaven for all of eternity. But that is up to you. You must make a decision. The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 4 that Jesus was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Because Jesus rose again from the dead, we have been pardoned. We are no longer guilty before God. That is, if you have faith in your heart and it tells you that this is true. And if you make the decision to call out to him, to repent of your sin, and confess him as the Lord of your life, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God's holy Lamb, Jesus Christ, is now calling unto you. Will you come and be saved today? <clears throat>